Thank you and hello Nina. It's a real pleasure. Hello Jara. Uh, we've known each other for quite some time now, but uh, we have done these kinds of talks privately, but not in front of a global <laughs> audience like this. You've been a guest on my talk show. It's really a pleasure to do this now with all the ladies listening and I hope we can be of some uh, benefit to them with, with our talk. So let's begin with, let's say, when you go back 15 years, right? Is this Nina now the one you have aspired to or have you dreamed of something else? So wh what's your thinking, you know, That's when you go back? It's an interesting question, actually, taking me back 15 years ago, that would be probably while I was studying uh -huh. at the Faculty of Economics, the department was e-business, and this is where I actually developed the passion for e-commerce. I cannot say that I aspired or mm. looking back like 15 years ago that I could see myself being where I am right now at the moment. But I think that I did all the things I did with a lot of passion. Uh, I think that I was raised in a sort of, you know, try to be best at whatever you do, uh, embrace knowledge as much as possible, wherever you go, whatever you do. Right. Knowledge is the only thing that no one can take away from you. So I was dedicated and committed 15 years ago to the studies. And uh, this is, I would say, where I developed, as I said, uh, the, the interest, uh, e-commerce and e-business was a very new topic at the time. Yeah. And uh, actually the 13 years ago, I won at the most innovative business plan competition. It was outside the faculty. Uh, it was organized by the National Center for Entrepreneurial Thinking and Development. And I won uh, first place uh, and I won. What uh, was the competition like? Do you remember? Uh, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, busi well, a business plan competition for a most innovative business model. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was when I was graduating at the fourth year of the, of the studies. Uh, this is actually when I was uh, uh, I was uh, selected as the best student of the generation, and this mm. was the same month when I won this competition. A successful month. A successful month, <laughs> yeah, indeed. And uh, I got this small grant, uh, which was five thousand euro, okay. to start the business. At the time, it seemed enough to like get, to get it going, right? At the time, it seemed like uh, you know it was a big yeah. check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> A lot and of money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of digits <laughs> when you put it in dinners, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and with the, together with the two co-founders and partners, this is how we embarked and embraced. Uh, so this is exactly what made you made the ball rolling, right? The, the I, grant. I think this was the main incentive. Maybe probably if I didn't get this grant at the time, maybe I wouldn't dive right into yeah. uh, launching a company in a totally new field. E-commerce, you know, at the time was, was completely new. Uh, but I think that together with the, with, of course, this was the incentive, as you said, but yeah. uh, together with my two co-founders and partners, we embarked with a lot of enthusiasm and passion that we will start this new business model, Grouper, yep. and that we will actually transform the e-commerce market. So this is what was driving us in the following decade, yeah. uh, because Grouper has been on the market for the market, the leading e-commerce company for more than 10 years now. Uh, so I think that uh, that was the incentive, uh, of course, but success comes with a lot of, as you know uh, yourself as well, with a lot of hard work, a lot of challenges. The, yeah. the road was bumpy, I would say. Uh, and speaking of the co-founders, did you know, obviously, because th there were no companies like that, you didn't have a Macedonian blueprint that you should follow. So how did you kind of uh, said, I'm doing this, you're doing this, and the third co-founder is doing this. How did you, you know, what was the, 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 the modus operandi, if you will? I think Who was doing what? I think we can say it was an organized chaos. Okay, yeah. as <laughs> it, it should can be, be, probably. <laughs> as, as any startup, I think, is. Uh, but I was pulling and pushing, and everybody somehow found their place uh, in, in the company while it was growing and constantly adapting and innovating. Uh, we were going through the through the obstacles and challenges together. S maybe some were where I was most involved. Some yeah. uh, from other nature was were more where the other co-founders were involved. But I think that uh, you know it's it's part of the game. Being an entrepreneur is is hard. Uh, it 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 comes so it's, with it's a lot a of sacrifice. It's hundred things at once, right? It's no yes. just this and this is the border and that's it. I it's don't like know. you get a lot of balls thrown at you uh, and. You, you have to be able to eat problems for breakfast and to yeah. be able to see challenges as obstacles. Uh, to, 
to really want when a problem co comes uh, to say this is something that is not familiar uh, to me. I'm going to dive into it because I need to solve. This is an obstacle standing on my way of success or on the, on the path towards uh, progress and growth. And this is how I learned a lot of new things that I never thought. Like uh, mm. I read a lot about regulation and law because this was something that was a challenge on our way. Yeah. Uh, finding people was a, one of the, of the challenges when we were developing the business. Lots of interviews, lots of, uh, you know, uh, trying to find the skilled people, but mm. also to train people that have the potential, try to grow the team because, as you know, it, it's not possible to grow the company without the people, without the team and the energy and the spirit yeah, and the culture mistakes. you built. I yes. Mean, it's inevitable that you make mistakes along the way and try to learn from it. But uh, let's go back to this thing. When was the first kind of moment when you realized, oh, this is going to grow big? Probably it's not, you know, at the first very start of it. It's probably somewhere along the way. Like, what was the moment or the period when you said this can be quite huge? I think that it actually it was right from the beginning when yeah. uh, now that you're taking me back, I remember the first day when we were launching Grouper mm -hmm. because we did a lot of preparation and a lot of work before we started. And it was, you know, because we were at the same time in, uh, trying to get the clients, the businesses that will offer these promotional offers for grouper customers and at the same time trying to attract customers while mm. educating both sides what e-commerce and online shopping is, what the business model is. And I think we were very well prepared, let's say, for the start. Uh, and when we launched, I remember the adrenaline of the first hundred uh, sales the f mm. from the day one. And then uh, after the, the following months and years, we noted uh, like a 200 300 growth rates mm. which was actually a very good sign uh, so i think that uh, we kind of felt it since the first month or two but then we knew that you in order to stay in the game and to keep you know growing you have to constantly change things you have to constantly learn you have to uh, 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 to expand the team and i think that you know, it's been really a hell of a ride. Mm. Uh, it's been a thrilling entrepreneurial journey. And looking from today's perspective, I think it's actually like a by the book mm. startup and journey since launching it a decade ago in a newly introduced f uh, field. People were not buying online. They did not use the payment cards, if you remember, 10 years mm. ago here in, in North Macedonia. Uh, so it's, it was like, uh, uh, you know, it disrupting a market. Yep changing and transforming e-commerce market and on the way our success was recognized internationally as well and up to a point uh, after 10 years where we did a successful exit actually yeah uh, so it's uh it's i think as i said by the book because you know you're growing the business up until uh, a certain level and you know that is the best thing to do for the company because mm. we all invest a kind of emotion in the business oh, yeah. And uh, this is, you know, the you know, this is like the right child. thing. Yes, and this is the right thing to do because uh, you 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 realize that somebody like Grouper is now part of the Polish group Aseco. Yeah, one of the biggest players in yes, the market. Yes, Peyton acquired Grouper, and this is a great success for for us for the team. It's a great recognition, but it's much more than uh, an acquisition. But walk us through it's, the process. I mean, it's, it, it, it's probably a difficult thing to let it go. I mean, whatever the price is, it, it can be the best price in the world, but still, it's not an easy thing to... I don't think it's about the price. Of, I mean, of course, it's about, uh, you know, you're investing a lot and you're expecting something in return. It's a parameter, okay, but, but not it's, uh, the only one. We were, I think, over the years, we were just committed and we loved what we did. We loved the challenges, we loved the struggles. We never thought, or when we launched the company, that this is something that one day will be acquired by somebody but it was rather you know go all in with full heart and passion and enthusiasm about building this thing and then when an opportunity comes you know as they say there is a saying that uh it's like um, uh, a luck is when readiness mm. meets opportunity right. and this was an opportunity that was presented like all the things were while we were growing grouper everything came sort of organically uh, and this thing was an opportunity that presented and we knew that this is the best thing to do for as if you put it like a ch child thing mm -hmm. but uh, the best thing for the for the business because you realize that it, 
that it can m grow much faster. That yeah, you the will potential is different. The potential is different. There is a big group uh, with uh, uh, more resources, expertise, yeah. opportunities for expansion, and you realize that it's not only about uh, it's m much more than acquisition and recognition. Mm. It's about giving potentially a chance to your business to grow further, to expand, and uh, and of course it's a it's a good it's a very good uh, feeling to know that. Of course. To know that and you was it kind of the first th this wasn't the first or it was the first potential buyer i mean were there other companies beforehand that were kind of sniffing out the uh i think that um there were some uh, some uh, uh several years ago we uh -huh. were approached by also other interested uh i think at the time that what was, was different VC with this funds one? Uh, we were at the time like not willing ready and we didn't even start any talks mm -hmm. we were like we had a meeting thanks, with the no partners thanks. and we're like is this yeah like we we, we love this and it, this has we still have great potential to grow it on our own and then after 10 years well you know there's a tipping point well where you realize uh this thing can be much more expanded and and uh, and, and can grow much faster if it's part of a of a m international group like it is at the moment. Yeah. So and this is probably a tough question to answer spontaneously, but let's try this. What are the parameters in your mind that should be checked out in order for you or any entrepreneur to say this is a business ready to be sold? I mean, okay. should you be kind of uh, tired from it all a little bit? Uh, the whole process of the acquisition is uh, is uh, is very demanding. I mean, uh, it was lots of months and sleepless nights and... Yeah, so it's not just like... It, no, it's, it's nothing <laughs> just like that, <laughs> no. And uh, I mean, it was a lot of hard work, like, like with all the things, and uh, I, I learned a lot from the, from the whole process of the, mm. the whole acquisition. I was heading the process after re uh, returning, after actually leaving the government, I was heading the process of the, of the acquisition. Yeah, you were Minister of Finance for those who don't know. Yes, and... Uh, and I don't think that, uh, you know, if, if we're th talking about uh, like having a checklist or something, mm. I, I, I think I'm not the person to give advice like what to do and what is the checklist okay. if you are planning to sell the business and you're starting with the intent to that sell idea. the business one day, because this is not what we did actually. So I think that uh, people but should be careful whose advice they buy right? and I, I'm, I'm rather, you know, to give advice about something that I've walked the walk, as they say. Uh -huh. So. I think that my, my advice would be do great work with passion, do what you love, and when an opportunity presents, be ready to embrace it. That would be from our, uh, from my experience and from our case, what we could say. Uh, but uh, yeah, be ready to, to like struggle, to hustle during the process. There will be a lot of things, especially uh, with the, you know, it looks like we, ha we were a small market, small company, mm. but it's, uh, it's nothing like, a, just like that a piece of cake that you can complete mm. the whole process of the so like you said like 12 13 years right the the whole journey with grouper is there something that kind of surprises you when you see all of that from this perspective um, are you surprised by anything or it was all something that it's rather logical for you i think it's is the i guess it matters the perspective about maybe uh if my perspective was different, a lot of things would have surprised me on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. uh, at the first, I was, you know, with, exp with experience, uh, we tolerate stress, we are more patient over time. Uh, at first, mm. the first years, I was much more, uh, you know, fast to react uh, yeah. with a shorter temper, maybe. And I, uh, and I, I, I think I had a lot of all of the things that were happening in the business uh, i had a lot of emotion about m many of the of the things of the obstacles of these surprises as as mm. we uh say um but i i think there were a lot there were a lot of things that were coming as a surprise but it was only on a short you give yourself like a minute or two to say oh my god is this really happening mm. is this really how it works but then you say okay we have to get over this and uh, and try to find a solution. So uh, this is actually uh, how over the years we were overcoming and learning all these surprising uh, moments and challenges. Uh, and 
I think I feel like I've said challenges a lot of times, but uh, you know, this is the new word for for problems, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this is actually how these surprising moments, positive and negative, uh, led us to do other things to adapt and uh, to do new things in the business that helped us grow. This is actually how one of these moments got me to co-found the Macedonian e-commerce association uh, back in 2017. Uh, I was, because Grouper was uh, you know, sort of transforming and mm. uh, the, the market and I was invited uh, at policy level dialogues in the ministries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes I was invited, sometimes I was the one requesting a meeting and trying to push when I saw a lot of things that were not good for the business development for all e-commerce companies, not only for Grouper. Uh, but because we were the biggest and the leader, it was somehow expected that we yeah. will, you know, uh, clear the path for the others. Yeah, be uh, the so locomotive. Yes. So this is how actually at one of the meetings I remember the Ministry of Information and Society, I was there as Nina from Grouper, mm -hmm. and they say, yes, uh, we accept this. This is very good initiative. It was regarding the regulation and the, the regulatory framework because it was very, like, um, as not uh, it still needs a lot of change changes uh, and I went with this initiative and they say uh, yes but you're representing only mm. one company uh, if you if you want to to lo uh, sort of lobby and push mm -hmm. for this uh, for Make the industry uh, you should gather a group of five ten companies maybe and this was the incentive how we launched the Macedonian e-commerce association back at that time I was uh, traveling a lot and having cooperation with the Jungtat, uh which with, with with whom we are organizing this uh, masterclass and I got the chance to meet with the Swiss uh, e-commerce association to find out more about how they are working I was engaged in the board of the European e-commerce association and with all this uh, trying to pick something from mm. all the sort cases that I have seen that's how we launched the association here which is now the, the very strong is, is representing the e-commerce industry as a whole it counts over 100 members, and uh, I think these are the things that, you know, differentiate us. If there is a problem, and if you're willing to dedicate energy, you try to make a change. And what's and the cooperation like with all of the members? I mean, is it sort of like um, one big family, or there are feuds and disputes? Uh, well, the the e-commerce the e ecosystem is uh, it's not only consisted from the e-commerce companies, but there is everybody is affected. Yeah. There are the banks, there are the delivery companies, exactly. the IT companies, the e-commerce sellers, uh, the institutions, especially here, who have to play a great role to enable uh, this uh, environment for growth for the companies. And I think we have a great energy with the with the members. Our work is recognized very much. Uh, we do evaluation forms. Everybody's very happy with the work that we do. And uh, we actually try to put like everybody in, in, into one, as I said, umbrella, and uh, try to make a more holistic approach to try to impact and to, to build the future of the e-commerce in the country and to build an inclusive uh, growth because that's actually what, without it, we cannot, uh, is, we cannot see only one isolated part of the whole ecosystem. Of and was this the kind of the first foray into quote unquote politics, you know, all of this uh, trying to navigate the landscape and talking to public institutions about the e-commerce association and establishing those types of things. Was this kind of the first foray into that kind of a thing or, or not? Because obviously it resulted in you being a member of the government later. Uh, I don't think that it's an, it has anything to do with it. I mean, the 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 association or the mm -hmm. nav navigating uh, previously, uh, of course, it it helped me uh, at the time, you know, um, think on how we can engage the government institutions into them wanting to make a change uh, for the good of the business sector because uh, the, the business sector is where the magic happens, but the government need to create that enabling environment for that magic to happen. And uh, as you are mentioning the position, I think that this was the main incentive why I, uh, I this has been the biggest surprise. If you have mm -hmm. uh, to, to go back to your <laughs> yeah. question about the business and the entrepreneurial journey, this has been the biggest surprise lately that I got the invitation by the prime minister to join the government. Uh, it was a 
from today's perspective, a very brave decision after navigating through the biggest crisis of all times. Um, but I think that the main motive was actually this ability uh, to be able to try to contribute from the inside and try to push change from the inside because as we talk now, I've been always trying to push for change from the from the outside. But it's always a struggle uh, for entrepreneurs to jump ship and go work for the government. You know, it's always kind of a mm, tough decision to make for because obviously you cannot run the business while being a member of government, right? Yes. You should you you must Definitely. leave it because it's not only a full time job; it's probably more than that to be a member of government. <laughs> Yes. So how did you went through this internal battle of I got to leave my business aside and now fully focus on this thing? It, it was a tough decision, it, uh, definitely. It was a difficult decision to make, not only uh, because, as I mentioned, I had two co-founders in the business and this was uh, I was the, like the phase that was heading previously, but it was more teamwork. I was heading the company as the CEO and obviously mm -hmm. I had to leave the company as a CEO uh, and to, to, you know, try to do, to take a look at the bigger picture and try to um, make, as I said, to the things that I have seen from the business sector mm -hmm. uh, and not only from the business sector, but from the whole ecosystem by having experience in the private sector, in the NGO sector, uh, also from a point of view of, uh, I did my PhD uh, four years ago, so I, Kind of, uh, you know, um, the, I, I, I can't say that while I was making the decision uh, that a very big factor was my own company. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I had, th this is a, the thing that I've been developing, but I felt like it's in secure hands, that it will, mm -hmm. uh, it, they, that we, we had a great team that will try, th that will manage and succeed to uh, continue the journey of Grouper. Uh, while I, as you said, 100% all in committed to myself to uh, to head the Ministry of Finance and then of course after COVID came it was far more than than those 12 hours that you yeah. that you mentioned. And what, what takes a bigger toll on your own self? The government thing or the private sector thing of being a CEO of a successful company? Because both of them I assume and I can safely say, take a huge toll on your own personal life. Mm. Yes, uh, now that I've seen, that I've been in the private sector, an entrepreneur for 10 years, I've seen also the NGO sector, the non-government, and then one uh, year in, in, uh, in the Ministry of Finance, as now seeing the government sector. This one year, I'm joking that it's been like 10, like 10 years, really, uh, and uh, I, you know, it's uh, it's good to be able to uh, have all this experience, to uh -huh. see all these things. It's not easy at all. It's, uh, it's I mean, it's, it was hard. It was a very difficult year, especially the the, the last one. Uh, I think that uh, now, after my mandate was uh, after I left the government, I prefer where the magic happens. <laughs> I've <laughs> seen, actually, uh, I, I learned a lot. I mean, uh, I tried. Uh, to induce changes. I did, I think, uh, during the, the crisis, as you know, I guess you're following the economic situation, how it was, things were developing in our country. I co-designed basically uh, almost all of the economic measures that the government was uh, was uh, mm -hmm. launching, you know, to try to help the business sector, to try uh, during this whole crisis to, uh, with the limited resources, to do the best that we could while I was trying to induce digitalization and try to debureaucratize and change how things were implemented previously. Uh, and uh, I am grateful for, for this. Uh, I think that uh, for everything that I've done, I have no regrets. I'm grateful for all the struggles. I'm grateful for the, even the hard decisions, for the mm -hmm. tough things in life, because at the end of the day, that's, that, that those things are what makes us us, makes us stronger, makes us more knowledgeable, smarter, wiser, definitely for the future. Uh, so I, as I said, I think it's been a thrilling uh, experience, the, the entrepreneurial journey, then it was a hard <laughs> yeah. experience that taught me a lot being a part of the government. And uh, as I said, I think 
uh, I prefer uh, probably where the value is being created and I will uh, I hope to have as many people in the government and in every in policy making that will enable uh, for the people that want to create to make them their lives easier actually and um, yeah so and what have you missed most in that year of being in the government I mean just as a normal human person what's the thing that you missed most is it the freedom to I don't know mm. go hiking biking enjoy life as a normal person is it something else I missed a lot of things, but I never thought about it because I knew that those are things that I couldn't afford at the time. Uh, so uh, I think I programmed maybe myself that this is what it is at the moment, especially during the, the crisis. And uh, I'm not, I would say, I, I don't, uh, I try not to complain. I'm not a complainer. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't think that uh, I'm trying now to uh, compensate for all these things that I probably missed, but I never uh, successfully, I guess. So, yes, uh, you know, I'm uh, still uh, trying to contribute to change now from the other side uh, as uh, as now from the role even uh, like OPA for, for, from the role of young tati trade for women that is trying to you know push for empower inspire women trying to give them a seat at, at the table trying to be present at the policy making without being in the government and I have continued this path uh, while now after that difficult year I try to find of course time for hiking biking that you mentioned for friends for family uh, and uh, to to enjoy to enjoy it and take a deep breath after a decade or more of, of, of hard work and all the things and do you see do you see potential for uh, improvement of women's role in society in our society either from the entrepreneurial side or the government side because you were a woman in business and a woman in government and I guess it's not a perfect in either one of those worlds right That's that right. there's place for improvement so what's your kind of thoughts on this subject yes women are underrepresented uh, and uh, well, you know a greater participation of women in the private, in the entrepreneurial, in the digital uh, world, in government is needed definitely if we want uh, more inclusive growth and faster growth of our economies. And actually this, uh, this program, uh, uh, this masterclass mm -hmm. that is co-organized by the United Nations uh, Conference on Trade and Development, um, that we that, that we are <coughs> all, uh, all present uh, today, uh, is actually trying to make a change in this area mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. are asking. So the, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development is, uh, is an organization that is fostering the inclusion of developing countries into the global economy. And the program E-Trade for Women uh, has, has a goal to inspire, empower, um, to connect and to give a voice to as many digital entrepreneurs all, all around the globe. Uh, so, and it's doing this by advocacy, like the E-Trade for Women Advocates. There is six of us on a global mm -hmm. level, and for the Balkans. Uh, we are trying, you know, to inspire and empower, to try to build capacities uh, so that we can make a change uh, on, a, on, a, on a bigger scale. Uh, so, uh, apart the advocacy, there is uh, the capacity building. So, this masterclass is actually aiming. We have around 100 women from the Balkans present today, mm -hmm. uh, and we are actually, you know, trying to uh, connect so they can exchange experiences, they can learn new skills, enhance their existing uh, knowledge, and uh, by this, help them on their entrepreneurial journey. Uh, and the other is, of course, um, community building. Uh, and the fourth uh, action that is trying to respond to these four pillars, inspire, empower, uh, connect, and give a voice, is actually um, public-private dialogues. So uh, all in all, uh, women are underrepresented all over the globe, not only, uh, yeah. not only uh, in the Balkans or in our country. And uh, we definitely need everybody to care, everybody to get on board and to realize mm. and to be aware what it means if we are um, not including women, especially today in the digital transformation. So uh, the, the, the goal and the point is uh, to 
for women to be braver, to be more ambitious, mm -hmm. uh, to be more skilled, to prove what they can really do. Uh, so that we see that digital transformation and we see a smarter and a better world probably sooner rather than later. Uh, so I, I strongly believe that there are a lot of women that have a lot to give, but there are maybe, you know, there is interesting studies that show that when positions are shown as um, that have greater power and mm -hmm. that require greater responsibility, they are more appealing to men rather than to women. And uh, there is data to prove this, that we need women as well to be more ambitious, but we need also to be aware that we're still living in men's, men's world. And it's the same even in the digital world, it's still dominated by men. So we are trying uh, to include as many women in this digital world, because the digital world has by far greater opportunity and potential to be more equal. Exactly. Uh, and we we need the the magic and the 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 care the uh, the the skills and everything that women can bring for for uh, for as I said for for a better world and for a, a faster growth. And to to all the women who are listening now, uh, a big number as as you've mentioned previously. I mean, you are a human being, and you obviously. Uh, have went through a lot and you obviously had pressures and, and obstacles uh, and everything, not only as being a woman but as, as being a person just trying to climb the ladder and whatnot. What were you doing personally, for example, in the last three or four years as you're more matured as a person? What are you doing in those times of trouble? which are inevitable to come. Like, what is your go-to strategy personally for yourself to kind of get back on track and just leave those that BS aside? Uh, I think many years ago, if, if you would have asked me about if I felt discriminated or mm -hmm. uh, when I was starting the business, I would probably say that I was more concerned about being too young when I would go into a meeting and I had 21 years old when we were starting the business, 22. Yeah. And this was maybe my concern, but my strategy was always be the knowledge, uh, be the most informed person in the room. Uh, because I felt that self-confidence self came mm -hmm. from, you know, I was, I, I went very prepared to all of the meetings that I went, even in discussions in the governments and policy when I was trying five years ago to, to induce changes. And then three, four years ago, uh, I started noticing maybe not so much on my personal skin, but all around me, the mm. prejudice and that you, if you are an ambitious woman, you have to prove yourself more than a man yeah. has to, that you have to, uh, you know, try to look at the bright side, not get anybody let, uh, get you down. Uh, and after uh, two years when I joined the government, I've seen another side of this sexist mm. or more, uh, let's say, men dominated world. And definitely it's not, a, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's not uh, okay for anybody to, to feel like that. But in times like those, you know, you, uh, you stand up uh, for yourself and yep. you don't let those things get you, but you say, this is an inspiration that I need to do something for others not to feel like this, or what can I do about exactly. it to improve it? Because if every one of us believes that by making small changes, uh, they can contribute or change something instead of having this attitude. Yeah, I can change yeah. that for, but it's only a small. Uh, mm. you what know, good will it what, do? Yes, what good will it do? Uh, then think if everybody's thinking like that, then exactly. we would we wouldn't have any progress or improvement. So I, with this program, as I said, with the UN, even before that, I was mentoring a lot of women um, when I was uh, when I was uh, doing the business. I I was a mentor to uh, startups, women, uh, not only from North Macedonia but other countries, and uh, I it was I was giving energy, but I was receiving back as well. Uh, it was giving me motivation even mm. to see that I've helped someone or encouraged them to do something differently. Uh, of course, it's very important for a mentor to have a good mentee and to have a mutual, you know, mm -hmm. good relation. But uh, all in all, um, afterwards and uh, now I, when I was in the in the government and uh, uh, it was the same month when I was appointed youth at e Trade for Women Advocate. And this is actually giving an opportunity. Uh, it's an honor to be an advocate, but it's also a great commitment uh, to try on a bigger level 
to inspire and empower uh, women through this program and to help as many, as many women for the good of all of us. Exactly. It's clear you care a lot and I, I really like to, that I'm seeing this. So yeah, thanks. I think it's, uh, we can wrap this up and uh, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it and it was my pleasure, Nina. It was my today. pleasure as well. Thank you. Thanks.